Hi, and welcome to uh, Old Iron, a compilation of uh, stories about classic cars and trucks in central Alberta. I'm your host, Michael Sutherland. Now our first story uh, deals with uh, a specialized area of the classic car cult, the rat rod. Check it out. My name is David Hykins and this is my 1930 Model A traditional hot rod. We're looking at a 1930 Model A body that's been chopped about 7 inches. Um, I do have a 7 inch portion that I cut out and, and um, it's uh, actually from a Murray sedan and uh, Murray was under contract to Ford and so uh, it was, the body was a pile of parts when I got it and I put the Ford parts and the Murray parts together, chopped the top, built the trunk lid. The car is on a custom built chassis and so what I did was uh, mocked the body together and put the engine where I wanted it to sit in the suicide style front end. So a suicide front end has the axle in front of the chassis rather than a traditional uh, positioning of the axle would be on a cross member under the motor behind the grill shell. Well, the Model A is a quintessential hot rod, definitely, right? I mean, the Deuce Coupe is, uh, is the only one that surpasses the Model A, in my opinion, for style. I personally like the coupes. Um, when, I was, uh, when I had the option to buy the coupe, I went with it and built something that I thought was traditional and honored some of the hot rods from the past. I feel that uh, cars are extension of a person's personality and they're a creative uh, port uh, canvas. They're a creative canvas to express yourself with and that's how I approach this build. A little edgy maybe, a little bit of a rebel maybe, a little bit off the beaten path, right? I kind of uh, dance to the beat of my own drum per se, right? So yeah, that, I think that shows. The, there was no difficult part. It was just like from A to B and carry on with the journey and put pieces together. I mean, it was a, it was a lot of labor, a labor of love, because a lot of the pieces are hand fabricated, one off pieces, but uh, no, it went together good, I, yeah. As you can see, the exhaust system has three tubes on it, and I actually get a lot of people to say, is that a V6? Well, it's not a V6. The two center exhaust ports share the same exit port, and that gives it a really unique sound. I'm proud mostly that it's a, a unique piece of rolling art that says uh, who I am and that it's, like I say, not on the beaten path. Um, I like the, the response it gets. I get a lot of thumbs up from young people and, and old people alike, middle-aged. Uh, I get a lot of response when I take it to a car show and people look at the motor and they look at the body and they look at the patina and they just overall like the package. The feeling is a throwback to cooler days, right? And and it's 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 rough and it's enjoyable to drive because it's got bias ply tires and the steering has a little bit of play and it's loud, right? And it squeaks and squaddles, squeaks and rattles and yeah, it's it's fun to drive. It's it's it engages you. Our second story in the old iron series is about two classics. One which went up in smoke, and the other one led a long life. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, my name's Al Evans. This is my 37 Chevy Master Deluxe. Well, this came into my possession. We lost the 38 Chev Coupe in the Springbank uh, fire of uh, February 2000. And in November of uh, 2000, I picked up the body from Guy Tossford, had Guy complete the car for me, uh, paint and everything, and body work. And the uh, body was completed in uh, uh, September of 2003. There was 15 street rods in the, in the fire at Springbank. A lot of people lost their cars and everything, but uh, it's a start over point. Uh, it was a, supposed to be a one year project that turned into a three year project, but the end result was great. We fought around with colors for oranges, yellows, reds, and kept going back to the red and paint time came. So the red, Viper red uh, paint theme was uh, what I chose and uh, went from there. We've had this car on the road now for, well, uh, 14 years, and then that 14 years I've put on 50,000 miles. Uh, we like to take the car on the highway. It's a very good cruising highway car. It's got overdrive, 305 TPI fuel-injected engine. Uh, cruises very well. Uh, we've been down to Minneapolis a number of times. Uh, it's a 21-hour drive down there and 21-hour back. It's never been on a trailer other than to the muffler shop when it was first built. So it gets lots of cruising, lots of miles put on it. The grandkids enjoy it, I enjoy it. It's, it's a lot of ton of fun. We have fun with friends and uh, uh, the best part is traveling and seeing sights and enjoying the uh, open road and uh, just having fun. Well, I like to like uh, all Chevs of the 37, 38 through 9 variety, the two-door sedan gives us the option of uh, four to five people in the car, which was appealing to me with grandkids and the family to be able to go with us. Uh, the coupe, uh, we only had two seats in our coupe and uh, decided that this body style was something that I'd prefer. It was one of the last cars that Guy built before he passed away in January. Uh, it's very special for me. Uh, it reminds me every time of Guy when I get in the car. I'm fanatic at keeping it clean, so it's as clean underneath as it is on top. Uh, and I have two grandkids that help me, uh, which is lots of fun. But uh, it's, you know, it's work, but it's it's also enjoyable doing it. It gives me something to do in my spare time, and uh, uh, it's very enjoyable doing that. I think I've changed the ignition switch and a control module in the distributor in that 50,000 miles. So it's, uh, it goes down the highway really well, and we enjoy it. And I think that's the fun part of uh, working on your car, enjoying it, helping other people work on their cars, which I'm involved with these days, and, uh, uh, and it's fun. I don't think this car is going anywhere. <laughs> I think this will stay in the family. I'm hoping it will stay in the family for a long time. On to story number three, where we get the lowdown on a truck with a varied historical line as it was being pieced together. My name is Mark Klein. I'm here with my 1970 Fargo. It's not really a 1970. It's insured as a 1968. The reason for that is part of the truck was my uncle's truck. It came from a 68. The box came from a, I'm not exactly sure about a 62. The hood is from a 1970. The grill is from a 1970. The seat is actually from a 1969 Adventurer. There's so few short box Dodge trucks around from, from the 61 to 71 era that, well, since this one's been on the road now for three years, I've only been to one more show where, I, where I've, there was one more short box. Uh, in those days, trucks weren't passenger vehicles, they were trucks. So not too many people that wanted a truck used it for just a passenger car. They bought a truck for a truck and a short box truck didn't fill the bill for, for a work truck. All the pieces from that era of truck, they all fit together. You know, you can take a box from a, a 61 and, and 
put it behind a 68 and it'll work. So the majority of the pieces will all fit together. You just need to know what to modify and get it to fit. Um, I'm not gonna lie, a lot of it was trial and error. You know, there's, there's certain pieces of it that I, it's, I spent a lot of time getting to fit. The dash, for instance, it has an in-dash shifter, which was a factory option. In 63 to 68. So I actually had to buy the truck that I found one in to buy the shifter. He wouldn't sell me the shifter. It's a blast to drive because I because it is on a newer frame, it handles very well. It it brakes well. It corners actually pretty good for a truck. Um, surprisingly, it only weighs about 3,800 pounds, which for a truck of, of any era is light. It turned out that it has a hue of green to it, a hue of black, and depending on the light, it looks like it's supposed to be the dark metallic gray. Why it is, I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if it was mistinted when it was mixed, or it's the green primer underneath. But when you walk around it, it might change color three times. I knew that I would end up with something that when I went somewhere, I'd be the only one. And so far, that's been the truth. As I, when I go to shows, or even when I go out and drive around, there's a lot of people that, if they don't see it from the front, they don't know what it is. We continue with our old iron feature, sticking with a truck. One which has been part of the family for quite some time. Hi, my name is Dwight Peterson. This is a 58 Mercury M100. Uh, it came from Saskatchewan from my brother-in-law. We were out visiting the brother-in-law in Kindersley, Saskatchewan, and I complimented on the truck, and he says, do you want it? You can have it. And I said, great. And he told me the story about the Americans coming up goose hunting, and they see a Mercury truck, and they wanted a Mercury truck down in the States. It's a Ford, basically, except the name. And that was the days when I told you before they had Lincoln Mercury dealers and a Ford dealer. Well, the Mercury dealer sold a Mercury truck, and all it is is the badging, otherwise it's a Ford. Well, in the States, I found on Facebook, there's like a club for 57 to 60 trucks, and down there they call them a fridge, because in 57 is when they went to, it's called a style side. 56 is still had big fenders. So uh, they said it looks like a fridge. It's a Wimbledon white, uh, it's a Ford color. The truck originally was red and white, and uh, I wanted a real light blue, and the wife wanted red and white, and we couldn't agree, so it was painted a white. <laughs> it's just my theory. If you go somewhere and pay $50,000 for a, an old vehicle, is it really yours? Did you do the sweat and get the scars and the smash knuckles and solve all the problems? Because a lot of stuff's a problem, Especially you take it apart and five years later you got to put it back together like doors and stuff. You take a door apart and you got a piece in your hand and you go, where did that come from? Batteries take up room and with all the cables and stuff on them, I think batteries are ugly. So I purposely moved it just back behind the box just to clean it up. Try to hide all my wiring I can in it. Uh, it's a Mustang two front end because the old front end was an, uh, an old dropped axle and they didn't steer well and stop well. So now we got disc brakes on the front. These trucks are not very big in size, especially for a man my size. And the gas tank was, you know, five, six inches thick. It took up a lot of room. So I had to take the gas tank out and it's in the back behind, between the frame. That gives me a little more room. And even the original steering wheel is almost like a bus steering wheel. It took up a lot of room. I couldn't get my belly in there. So I had to get a little smaller steering wheel. The Mercury Man, that's being a logo for, uh, Mercury for I don't know how many years. They've always used that on different things, like I even got it on a key fob. Uh, it's one of my favorite cartoon characters, is Foghorn Leghorn. And he was called, he's a white leghorn, and this is a white leghorn, I guess. <laughs> this is my leghorn I'm driving. 
there's only one other one around. Uh, there's certain vehicles, I won't say what they are, but certain vehicles, I just walk past them because there's hundreds of them. And all this difference is different colors, right? Some, I, some years I can't even tell apart if it's a, you know, if it's a 70 or 72, I don't know, because it's just another one of them. I want something different. A lot of people think this truck is ugly, and that's their opinion. In 57, Ford went away from the wood and went to a metal floor, and their brother-in-law actually had a cow and a calf in the back of here. So the metal was very wowed. And I've always liked the looks of wood, so I had to build my own wood in the back. There was no kit that I could find to, to buy it anywhere, so I had to build my own. We got the truck probably 12 years ago, and the last six is when doing some serious work on it. So it's taken about uh, a good six years and a lot of money. <laughs> But when you're done, it's, uh, you get pretty proud when you're staying at a show and somebody walks up and says, this is your truck? And you say, yes, this is my truck. I built it. Our final story takes us back to the classic car era. This car has been part of the owner's life since a very early age. My name's Robert Hedesey. I have a 1958 Plymouth Savoy with a 313 engine in it. My grandfather bought it in brand new in 1958 and he drove it for about 12 to 14 years from what I found out from my mom. And he bought a new vehicle, but my grandmother refused to let him buy a truck. <laughs> so he hauled fence posts, bales, he hauled everything that a farm would haul into a car. To slide the fence post in, he'd lay it on the fin and then slide it into the trunk. And when he slid it into the trunk, he'd actually flatten the, the chrome flat at the back end on the fence or on the truck car. So I'm working on trying to get that straightened out still, but it, it's better than it was. It's not flat. This is the car I learned how to drive in when I was 12 years old. Grandfather took me out into the field. We were fence posting. It's like we'd walk down the fence, hauling fence posts. And he goes, oh, go get the car. So off I wander down. It's like, okay, I watched my grandfather drive this thing. So I drove it. I learned how to drive on it in the farmer's field. I started off, I'd pull a fender off and work on the fender so that I could, a week on the fender off, I could tear it off, paint it in the backyard. I, didn't, I don't have a garage, so I had only the summer months to work on it. I would turn around and paint it, put it back on. I'd never done it before in my life. I, I wasn't a trained welder, so I learned how to weld in my own backyard. I learned how to do body work. I learned how to do everything on this car to do it. From my understanding was, is in 1958 they had the Plymouth Fury, which is everyone knows as Christine in the movies, um, and the Plymouth Savoy. My understanding was that in a Plymouth Fury, it was a two-door, and the Plymouth Savoy, which is identical to the Fury, is actually a four-door. This is a Canadian manufactured car uh, because it has a 313 engine in it. Only the 313s were manufactured in Canada. They'd ship the engine blocks to the US as a 313 and they'd be bored out and made into a 318 and then they'd be put into the same car as a 318. When my grandfather ordered it, he actually ordered this as a red car. And the, the paint color chip says, tornado red. So when he, it showed up, he looked at it and went, it's orange. And they went, no, it's red. And he said, no, it's orange. 
<laughs> and so that was the debate with the car. It was, it's an orange car. I don't see red in it. If you ever go for a cruise in this car, it's a beautiful car to drive because every time you hit a bump in a modern car, you feel that bump. This car has so much weight to it, it just, the shocks hit it, it absorbs it, and you're like floating on air. It's a it's nice cruising vehicle. They're not small. I like that they're a larger fin, they're more dominant on them. It's, it's, it shows class. <laughs> That's what I've always liked. And like this car is just, it's meant so much to me over the years. And it's like the fins are, weren't rusted out, weren't heavily damaged except for the chrome on the one side. And the whole car is built as a solid vehicle. It's been in the family since 1958. I've learned on it. My brother learned on it. My cousins learned on it. Everyone had learned on it. And I didn't want it to be just sold and given away. It's, it's part of the family, it's heritage in the family. And it means a lot to me as a, something that I can remember with my grandfather.